Hi everyone, it's my pleasure to see you all today with us in our final meeting uh, from 3x Education Web3 Startups Analytics. And today we are celebrating the graduation of cohort 7 and really happy to see you all with us. And uh, today we will share with you some recap from 3x Education. After that, we will have the deal memo presentations from our participants and we will finish with the opportunities. Uh, so some uh, new things are coming uh, with Srex Education and you will have new opportunities with us. So uh, please stay till the end to receive this exclusive information. So um, Srex Capital is, is a digital assets investment and advisory firm that focuses on early stage Web3 ventures. And uh, Srex Education is a part of uh, Srex Capital and we organize comprehensive program to uh, learn proven frameworks, strategies, and tools for Web3 investments. Uh, we already organized uh, organized seven cohorts uh, of the program. We have 152 alumnus, and after this program, we're really happy to continue working with our participants. So, uh, 17 people uh, stay with us with Srix Capital to organize different projects uh, and work part of full time with Srix Capital. And we're really happy to see you with us in the next programs and also. Uh, after that, really happy to have you with us, continue working together, uh, boosting Web3 innovations. Um, and at the end of this event, you will have a chance to hear more about new opportunity with us. It's our new program, DeFi Innovation and Growth, uh, during which you will have a chance to uh, receive 20 plus DeFi tools. I have 24 per 7 AI tutor and community assets. Um, and the program uh, will be for eight weeks and four hours per week study program. So um, please keep in touch, uh, stay uh, till the end to receive the information about it. And actually, like sharing just a few, like little bit information about it so during the program uh, you will receive an information how uh, to transfer from passive crypto holder to savvy defy investor by mastering strategies to build a census driven and secure portfolio with potential 3x returns uh, just in two years so you can also go to the website and check more information or just uh, scan the qr code that you can see on the screen and coming back to Web3 Startups Analytics program, uh, recapping the cohort seven, we had 18 participants from all around the world. And we worked uh, closely during eight weeks and totally our participants analyzed 23 startups. And today we are happy to share a few startups from our program that we want to share with our community and celebrate this uh, success. Regarding the topics we covered, so week by week, we go through the main parts of investment analysis. So we started from introduction to evaluation process in VC fund, jumped to crypto equity um, and token investments, start evaluation discovery, deal memo preparation, market assessment, tokenomics discovery, community and team evaluation, role of AI in VC fund, and um, our get, we had guest lecture from our partner, Yuskotum, legal firm about legal aspects of investing in seed stage Web3 startups. And today we're really, really happy to host this event. And as I mentioned before, to celebrate the graduation of cohort seven. And today, uh, some, of, some of our participants will share the deal memo, the main analytical uh, document of the startup that VC funds uh, prepare uh, to um, have the startup analytics. And uh, we will have the format of four minutes presentations plus two minutes questions and feedback from our community and from our uh, partners. So feel free to write your questions to the chat and we will be happy uh, together with our participants to cover them. And um, so let's uh, meet our presenters today. So uh, the first one is Adam Anwar who will share uh, the deal memo of Open Games Builder. Second one, Bernard M. C. Guinea uh, will present the Galaxies. Third one, Ilyas Tetsuk, the uh, startup sensor. Um, 
Next one, Ina Garrido Goldlink, and we will uh, finish the presentations with Olesa Fremna uh, presenting Flashy Cash. So my pleasure to um, see this, uh, have this meeting with us today, and looking forward to have the productive session. And um, want to invite the first speaker to the stage. So Adam, the stage is yours. Welcome. Thank you so much, Oksana. I just wanted to start off by thanking everyone over at 3UX and the team for putting this together. Um, I was part of the original first cohort um, that we first had um, uh, about a year and a half ago. And it's quite amazing how the program has evolved and the education has continued. Um, I wanted to go over a deal memo that is for a uh, infrastructure play for gaming. And the name of the company is Open Games Builders. Um, it has, <clears throat> excuse me, it has, a, it is attempting to capitalize on gaming architecture um, using both a game, in house gaming studio that they're creating with their own games and some uh, very exciting uh, architectural plays. So, really quickly, I wanted to go over, uh, just show a quick video of what some of that might look like. And as we can see, it, it seems to be a uh, quite interesting project. Um, it was founded in 2022. Um, Open Web Games Builder is a Web3 gaming architecture provider, and it provides uh, easy onboarding for uh, both developers and for gamers. Um, the CEO, uh, Mauro Blanco, has been a professional esports gamer uh, at the highest echelon of gaming for about 20 years. He also previously built um, some successful businesses that he offloaded in his local market in Valencia, Spain. Um, he also is has been a part of ESL and DreamHack, some of the largest gaming competitions that are uh, seen around the world. Um, next, um, they have a CTO by the name of uh, Wahab Ahmed and a C uh, CCO by the name of Bashar Okal. Um, these guys have been working together um, since 2022, and I think one of the uh, really interesting things about this deal is that they actually, uh, Bashar has worked in the commercial sector with the Spanish government for quite some time, and he's been in charge of presenting uh, project, various projects to the Saudi royal family and the Ministry of Development and Sports. Um, the CTO has worked on several games and has a master's in game design. And the team of advisors is also quite well distributed with a lot of names of backers and partners that we would know. Um, really quick, I just want to go over those. Um, some of them include Sonny uh, Ruka, Lassie Hall, Ivandro Oliveira, Ian Scarf, and Mario Nothal. Um, and so I think that the, the team, the backers for this are quite strong. Um, separately, their tokenomics, um, it's a fixed tokenomics. It does, they're not going to be adding uh, more tokens. That has a 12-month uh, cliff and 36 months of vesting. Um, you can look at it more in detail on the actual deal, deal memo itself. <clears throat> I'd also um, like to continue that their uh, current roadmap, um, their it has quite a few uh, partnerships that we would like to see. Um, some of them include Binance Chain, Immutable X, Polygon Labs, and their go-to-market strategy is focusing on partnering and penetrating these Web3 communities as they grow during this bull rush. Um, the break-even that I have estimated would be probably towards the end of 25, uh, 2025 if um, they're able to hit the numbers that they're looking to hit uh, moving forward. Um, as far as the uh, <clears throat> solution goes, it's just to, it's a it's a competitor product for Web3 to compete with um, you know Steam, Blizzard, any of these companies that have a real strong hold on gaming architecture, and um, it'll allow for other companies to game studios developers to upload their games and make it so that it's easy for, you know, easy that what, what the CEO described it as is it's so easy that your grandma should be able to do it. Um, <laughs> so I think that's uh, 
something that I look forward to because, uh, you know, I'd, I'd love to have, you know, my parents or someone be able to hop on a game studio. I know that the market for this is growing uh, quite considerably, um, especially kids that are uh, younger. They're uh, very much into the metaverse and um, like I can't get my nephews off Ocul Oculus ever. <laughs> and so um, the market is projected to grow at a, a compound annual growth rate of about 13%. Um, until 2032, uh, with an overall market size of about $650 billion globally. Um, the online cloud gaming market is supposed to account for um, some of the most substantial growth in this uh, market. So it's, it's supported by one of the uh, fastest growing subsets in gaming, um, supported by the flexibility and convenience that online gaming gives all of us, right? Um, well, some of the things that we've looked into, it's um, gaming helps, you know, decrease your blood pressure, makes you happier. It's um, a good outlet for people. And for that reason, I think this is a valid candidate. I think that they're a good dark horse candidate uh, for branding and identity in a pretty crowded field um, with Web 2 and Web 3 attempting to take uh, a slice out of this niche. Um, with a name like Open Games Builder, it's easy to understand exactly what they're trying to do. One of the things I would recommend is that they should target the Asian Pacific market more than they are currently um, because it's one of the markets that's growing uh, demonstrably. So, um, yeah, I just want to thank you guys again for uh, listening to me talk and um, hand it off to my next cohort participant. Um, thanks a lot for your comprehensive work and all the dedication that you put into into the cohort and uh, making this analysis. And it was uh, really a pleasure working with you. Uh, we've been working for a long time, uh, so I, I'm also curious, uh, you know, to um, hear your thoughts about some risks that could be uh, attached to to uh, this project. Because indeed, indeed uh, you know, Web3 gaming is on the rise and probably we're going to see a lot of triple A's, triple uh, A games coming up. Uh, but what kind of risks do you see? Uh, have you found any? So some of the uh, risks that I see is it, that they're, the entrants are going to be very large, right? Like we're going to have Roblox, uh, Steam, Blizzard, Epic, all of these entrants definitely join the fold, right? Um, and so that, that is some uh, significant downside risk for sure. I think that what they can do is um, attempt to differentiate themselves more and stand out more as a branding play to get some of um, the younger gamers onboarded. One of the things they're doing to uh, help with this is they created a, a card game as well. That's, uh, you know, actually it, it's kind of like Magic the Gathering. Um, but it's for children. So it's like they're trying to onboard very young children at um, a time when you know they're first growing and learning. So this is a longer play for sure, and it's definitely a high risk, I'd say. Um, but the reward, as you know as well, um, can be great with some of these plays. We're uh, entering at a time when they're uh, still at a very low valuation comparatively. And based on the support that they have from uh, Valencia, Spain, which is uh, they have their own Web3 gaming uh, division, actually, and an esports market where they're trying to push out local companies. Um, due to that, it actually decreases our risk substantially and it would help us moving forward. Got it. Thanks. Uh, thanks for that. Um, and overall, uh, it was a pleasure working with you. Thanks a lot again for the for the document. Well, let's take Thank a look you. at this uh, startup. Um, a little bit deeper together uh, to see if we can invest. So you're just on time. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, and we're moving towards uh, the next participant, uh, who is uh, Bernard. Uh, Bernard, how are you? Hope you're doing great. And uh, you're ready to, to present. We don't see you yet. So we're uh, actually Looking forward to see Bernard's presentation uh, with uh, Galaxy. And Bernard is coming. He is to get on board with us. And uh, unfortunately, we don't 
uh, see you or hear you yet. Are you able to hear me now? Yes. Hey, hey, Bernard. Great. Hey, how Could are you? Did we hear you? Unfortunately, my camera isn't working, so I'm just going to have to do it mm -hmm. without a camera. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. That's fine. A little bit of privacy for you, right? <laughs> and I literally, I'm just back from holidays and it got uh, the screen got smashed on the plane, so it doesn't work. Oh, my God. <laughs> Okay, sure, that's fine. But hey, yeah, I'll get started here because um, I have a work meeting in like 13 minutes, so um, I'm, I won't rush, but that's what I'll try and jump through here. Mm -hmm. So sure. the... you, you can, you can, uh, sorry, Bernie, you can uh, also try to zoom in a little bit so yep. people would be, uh, you know, be able to see it a little bit better. If you zoom in a little bit more, okay, yeah. Is that's... that okay? Yeah, that's good now. Okay, Thanks. good. So the project that... Um, I have, have done a data memo on here is called Galaxis, okay? So um, I was initially uh, given a different project, but this is one that I've actually worked with uh, with another company. So I know it pretty well um, inside and out. So I've decided to go with it. Unfortunately, the raise for the final private uh, fee is just closed. Um, I was trying to help. I was working with uh, Petro and some other guys at 3X to try and get everybody in front of Galaxis in time, but we all just ran out of time. Um, so there was a private uh, round up until about a week ago. I didn't have time to do a completely new deal memo, so I'll just go through this one, okay? So um, Galaxis is a, it, it, it's a Web3 based project, okay? So what it's trying to do is to provide frameworks and, and infrastructure to allow Web2 so that's like your traditional social media, like Facebook, YouTube, uh, Twitter, or whatever it may be, to then become decentralized and actually get onboarded onto Web3, okay? So um, if you think about kind of like the creator economies where people sell merch, um, it's a massive industry. It's globally, the creator economy is worth 250 billion a year, okay? Uh, estimated by Goldman Sachs. So they're trying to tap into that industry and get those people uh, over from web two onto web three, okay? So they're providing a uh, scalable infrastructure to allow that to happen. So um, I will share my screen here just to show uh, the one of the pitch decks, okay? Just give me two seconds till I grab it here. Um, just one sec. I should have this up. Uh, but yeah, it's an interesting project, especially the founders. Um, they're pretty prolific and successful, and then they have backing from some of the biggest guys in the space. So, uh, Sergey Na Navarov of uh, Chainlink is one of the biggest backers of this project. So, um, that's really one of the main things that I'm interested in, to be honest. So, I'll take you through pitch deck super quickly, uh, and then I'll go back to the deal memo. All right, so. Galaxis, it's scalable Web3 infrastructure for communities. Um, really what that means is, like I said, trying to get um, sort of Web2 communities onto the crypto uh, and onto blockchain and really get them up to speed with Web3, okay? So um, it's they were founded in 2020, okay? So they have done like a lot of progress in the last three and a half years, okay? Um, and really their main thing is where, you know, you're going from, People are just sort of uh, useful assets to people owning their own assets. It goes from, you know, data collection, um, which is a big issue with Facebook, where you actually own your own data. Uh, so it's all the benefits that you get with crypto and with Web3 anyway, is trying to bring that to the people that are, you know, on Facebook, uh, on YouTube, that kind of thing. Um, so that's really um, all I'm going to show from the pitch deck, okay? Uh, and I'll take us back to the memo. Just give me one sec. Um, yeah. So the I'll take you through the executive summary here. So overall, um, I'll give it a four out of five. Okay. Um, what I'll give it a breakdown. So that's based on pretty much the crypto market as a whole, and then the industries and sort of the niches that Galaxis is trying to target, and then obviously the um, the people like who are actually running Galaxis and, and they're backing, and that all is kind of accumulated into a four out of five. Okay, so um, pretty much the crypto's total market cap has increased over the last year by roughly 120 percent to 1.7 trillion. And um, whenever you look at the market cap that's excluding Bitcoin and Ethereum, so that's pretty much all of the altcoins, it's only up 70 percent. So you could say that. Um, that is kind of 
uh, dragging. It's not really following with Bitcoin yet, which would suggest that this is the whole market cycle is kind of following previous cycles where Bitcoin leads the way. Ethereum closely follows, then money flows into Ethereum, and then money flows from Ethereum into the large caps, mid caps, and the uh, small caps, okay? Um, so I think we're at the stage, to be honest, from my analysis, where we're like Bitcoin is leading the way, Ethereum is kind of lagging as well. Um, but from that, that would suggest to me that altcoins have a have a long way to run, okay? They're, 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 they want, they're not really close to being... Um, you know, topping or anything like that. Currently, the total three, which is the total market cap, excluding uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum, it sits at 50% below all-time high, okay? Um, along with that, 2024 is positioned to be a pretty pivotal year, okay? Um, while I think it is going to be pivotal is, you've, you've obviously got the ETFs that are pending approval. It looks like uh, people are betting on it being approved. Um to me, it looks like they're going to be approved. It would be a shock if they weren't approved. But along with that, you also have the halving as well. So you're going to have potential massive increase in uh, demand for Bitcoin uh, while we also get a supply shock with the halving, which obviously reduces how much gets sold. So again, if money flows in the direction that it's flown in every other cycle, it'll go Bitcoin, Ethereum mid into the rest of the market eventually. So again, that's great for any project that's launching really. Um, and then it, it, you know, it comes down to sort of market timing is kind of the last part of the market I want to look at. Galaxy's plans to launch at the end of January, their to token generation event. So again, they're positioned here right in the midst of just as everything's kind of um, getting going in crypto. So I think the timing is quite good. Um, let me see what else I've got here. So overall, the fully diluted uh, value of the private sale is 9.5 million. Okay, I think that is pretty reasonable given the market that they're going to be targeting. So when you look here at um, the analysis of, uh, of the investment, okay, I'm going to go through a couple of different markets. I've got the wrong number there. Uh, um, so I'm going to... Bernard, uh, sorry, we're almost out of time. Uh, can you wrap up your, your thought? And then yeah, I, I I'll, be, that... I'll be yeah. I'll be like two minutes, okay? Sure. So pretty much there's three main things you want to look at. Um, if you look at the social platforms, the top 10 social platforms on, in crypto, they range from about 6 million to 350 million market cap. And so if Galaxis was able to get to, the, to one of the top of those, obviously that's a big, inc that's multiple tens of X over the 9.5 million FTV. When If you compare them to other Web3 projects, which they are, they're in the multi-billion market cap. So again, that's massive return. And then thirdly, when you look at the creator content um, aspect of things that they're trying to target. That's a $250 billion a year industry, which is projected to grow by 9% every year. Um, these are all the different prices, okay? So you can pretty much see uh, most people get a reasonably good deal from all the different, um, you know, seed right through to public. Everything's kind of vested at a reasonable amount. So um, there's not going to be a whole lot of selling. The main downside to that for me was that as an investor, you want to get your coins as quickly as possible, right? You don't want to be vested, but for the project, it's actually good for the project. I'll just really quickly go through the founders here. So two main founders, both of them are serial entrepreneurs, okay? Uh, both of them have founded a, a company, a, a crypto education company called Skilltree. One of the guys um, works closely with Consensus and the Ethereum Foundation. He has successfully exited numerous technology software companies. So personally for me, he's a four out of five. The younger guy, he would be a four out of five if he, if he was older and he had more experience. He's got five years of experience, so that's all good. The team, 20 full-time employees, 35 years of total experience in crypto and blockchain. So I think they're, they're well uh, suited to do what they're trying to do. The solution of what I've spoke about, so again, it's gonna make it really easy to get people from web two to web three. Um, the market I've spoke about, token economics, yeah, um, I think they're reasonable enough. Obviously, the lower the raise and the le less the vesting, the better for me. So I think it's pretty in the middle of what I would expect. Their community is massive. Um, they've got 9,000 Discord mem uh, members, 75,000 Twitter followers. Um, on Twitter, tons of engagement. They're like getting, um, you know, 100 likes, 100 shares, 100 comments on every single post on average. Um, yeah, Medium, all that stuff's great. Lots of good uh, articles. 
Finally, their backers. So, like I mentioned, Sergey Nazarov and Nick Jensen Johnson. So, that's Chainlink and ENS founders. They're two of the main uh, promoters of this. So that's great. The roadmap. No issues with the roadmap. Uh, they're launching January. Lots of new products coming out this year. And then the main risks. Um, I don't see any particular risks to this project other than crypto risks, really. So you got the market risk of crypto itself. We all know what that is. Um, regulatory, it's volatile, hacks, different things like that. And then their competitors. So because this is such a big industry and um, trying to get people from Web 2 into Web 3, uh, they're obviously going to have lots of competitors. So I really just think the top risks are market risk and their competitors. Mm -hmm. All right. So I think I flew through the end of that in about <laughs> two minutes there. Yeah, thank, thank you so much, Bernard, for uh, this no comprehensive uh, document and presenting it. Um, our senior analyst, Petro, uh, have one question for you. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Quick yep. question. Let me clarify, Petro, please. Yeah, it will be a quick question. Uh, first of all, hi, everyone. Happy to be here and happy to provide my thoughts on, on this deal. And it was my pleasure working with Barnard together during the education program that we have on scaling operations of 3x Capital that we are doing and looking into future uh, working together with you. And getting back to the deal memo, uh, the question is about the NFT market at all, because we know that the majority of revenue generated for Galaxis in the past was from selling uh, NFT cards and NFTs. And as we know from 2021, the NFT market is decreasing rapidly. So do you see the impact of the size and performance of NFT market on the future revenue of Galaxis? So um, I do think that it is something to consider. Um, obviously, NFTs had a really big, like six months to a year um, there where they were pretty overvalued, to be honest, I think. Obviously, that's great at the time if you're in NFTs, but I think it maybe did more harm to the long term, like sustainability of the NFT market. Um, NFTs should be re like reasonably priced for what they are. OK, um, so I see going forward, they'll just hopefully be reasonably priced. So um, when, say, a Web3 content creator wants to create some kind of, um, you know, content within a metaverse, if they're going to be selling it to you know millions of their followers it, it has to be reasonably priced i don't think we're going to see you know a million dollar uh, monkey pictures really anymore into the future to be honest but you never know um the market hasn't really got going yet in my opinion like i said we're 50 percent below all-time highs for alts all caps so who's to say um you know having comes bitcoin etfs rates come down everything can go crazy again so uh it just i don't know I wouldn't be too concerned about NFTs, to be honest. I think it's just sort of one part of what they do. Obviously, that was just what they, um, they uh, what's the word, sort of took advantage of that at the time. So NFTs were making loads of money. So that's why they took advantage of NF NFTs at the time. But if I, if I was able to go through their roadmap, which we don't have time for, you can see they've got a, tons of other stuff coming out as well. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for a deep yeah. macro analysis. No Appreciate your work. And word back to Dima. Thank you so much, Bernard. No okay, we're moving forward uh, with uh, Ilya. Ilya, please. Hi. Uh, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be part of Cohort 7 in 3X Education uh, and to present my demo. Actually, one moment, I will share my screen. Sure. Now you can see it, yes? Yeah, it's here. You can zoom in it a little bit so we can see it better. Uh, OK. Yes, Look, looks better, a little bit more, and then it's good. OK. Uh, so my project is a uh, uh, sensor. Um, it is a um, um, sensor is uh, omnichain liquidity protocol that enables slippage-free cross-chain swaps uh, using uh, solving, uh, solvent and omnichain um, synthetic assets. Um, and uh, basically, with simple words, it uh, replaces uh, uh, bridges with a few swaps. Um, this is a great picture to show how it does it. Uh, so, it, uh, for example, if we want uh, uh, 
to bridge uh, Ethereum to Siri. Uh, what it does is um, um, Ethereum to uh, synthetic Ethereum, or uh, then it uh, swaps uh, uh, synthetic Ethereum uh, with uh, synthetic uh, Siri and uh, then to Siri. Uh, so, um, okay, I will move on. Uh, the founder is uh, uh, Ritvik Rudra. Uh, he was uh, the part of uh, Team uh, Policy Bazaar and uh, also led uh, teams uh, that build uh, online uh, online uh, retail uh, platforms, man managing over uh, half million uh, daily transactions. And also he co-founded uh, close-ended uh, secure uh, social networking for students. Uh, the team is uh, quite great. It consists uh, of uh, 10 members, including the CEO of uh, uh, Zokyo and uh, uh, Maimoro AI. Uh, the team, uh, almost uh, every part of the team has uh, uh, four plus years uh, of experience uh, uh, in the apps or DeFi uh, space at all. Uh, we had uh, product and uh, software developers, uh, uh, DevOps uh, leads, uh, full stack engineer, um, uh, blockchain analyst, uh, and uh, product management. Um, so, so we should talk about it. Uh, uh, market at all, um, all the five products are valued at um, uh, 52 billion and uh, projected to grow uh, to. 131 billion by uh, um, by the next actually five years. Uh, so um, market of uh, synthetic assets uh, now uh, is uh, valued around uh, 2.1 billion, uh, while uh, seven millions is uh, the possible uh, obtainable market for uh, our project. And uh, the main comp uh, competitor is uh, uh, Synthetix. Uh, it is a project that uh, almost uh, uh, has all, uh, all the market of uh, uh, synthetic assets. Uh, so the community, the uh, community is uh, um, not uh, so well because uh, um, it, uh, Actually, Twitter score here is only six, as you can see, and it is pretty low. Uh, it is uh, uh, followed by uh, founder of uh, Outer Line Ventures, uh, Jamie Brook, uh, and uh, uh, Acceler Network. Uh, ex actually, a uh, few of those are uh, one of the um, key investors in Sinsu. Uh, the bakers and partners uh, are um, there are tier two and tier uh, three partners of this project. Uh, um, so since uh, completed a successful seed round uh, conducted on May 22, uh, and um, investors contributed uh, um, 750k in funding, uh, and also it is. Uh, uh, it's ongoing private round. Uh, Sincer has granted essential support from uh, Laser Digital and it is planning to raise uh, 3 million with it. Uh, also, at all, after all uh, uh, yeah, rounds excuse of me. sales. Can, can you please wrap up? We, we have uh, just one minute left and uh, Ivan. Uh, my partner at Rix Capital here, uh, he would also like to ask a question. Okay, so I have left only the roadmap uh, and the short term, uh, short -term term uh, focus will be tied to uh, public testnet uh, and it will uh, also have a great impact on marketing. Um, and actually I can end here. So mm -hmm. I guess that's Thank all. you so much for analyzing. Yes, Ivan, please. Yeah, thank, thank you for inviting me. Uh, great to have you, Ilya, during the program. I'm curious to know uh, what were the most valuable insights you learned during the program? Actually, um, 
there was uh, great insights about uh, uh, some instruments uh, um, which I can use to analyze project and uh, of course uh, the community which uh, uh, helps you a lot uh, mm -hmm. to dive into this uh, space sure thanks Celia. and also i'm curious to know more about the uh, project so what risks have you identified usually in the deal memo we have a separate section in the bottom where we put together a few risks that we have found out so maybe you have this section uh, or you can just highlight a few things yes actually the main um, the main task or problem uh, I guess it is uh, their competitor because uh, uh, syntax is, uh, is uh, huge now. And uh, if we compare to Sincer, uh, this project, um, it has to do a lot of work uh, to compete uh, in this space. Um, so I guess that's it. Thank you, Leah. It was a pleasure to work with you. Wish you all the best. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Leon. Uh, now I would like to invite uh, the next uh, speaker, uh, Anna. Uh, Anna, please join us. It was a pleasure of working with you uh, during the program, and I'm really inspired uh, and excited to hear uh, your deal memo. Uh, it just, uh, you know, a, such a great example of person who has so, so diverse interests and so diverse background now working on web3 and doing such a great job i'm looking forward to hear from you anna please thank you so much dima um yes hello everyone uh, my name is anna i'm an analyst an investment analyst with background in um in data analysis and business development and the startup that will be presenting for you today is called Goldlink. Um, Goldlink is a, um, a startup that was funded in early 2023, and they are building a uh, lending protocol focused on under collateralized um, lending, which is an emerging niche in the DeFi sector. Um, Gold link is like very is very new, so very little information was available about this startup. However, they're proposing a, um, an innovative thesis, and so overall, they have a great idea. But at this stage, they they haven't developed a demo yet, or don't they don't have a market strategy that's very well defined. But we'll go over that as I as I dive a little bit into into each of these topics. So throughout the deal demo, you'll see some of these links to the sort the information sources and uh, documentation and graphs that can help us illustrate the risks, the strengths, and um, the opportunity that's here from this project. So this startup is in the pre-seed stage. They have raised $1.4 million from top tier investors in the industry. And their innovation that they propose is in the development of a brand new architecture, right? So they're trying to combine existing lending architectures to solve for capital fragmentation and provide risk isolation uh, for lenders, which is very interesting. Um, the founders, there's a couple of founders, Sam Wenger and Kilan Miskell, they both attended the University of Pennsylvania as economic majors. Um, so I think that their strength is that they have a complementary skills. Uh, Sam went into getting a master's degree in computer science after, after he graduated from the economics major and then went on, went on into working as a software developer for Bloomberg and DYDX, which gave him a lot of that um, experience on, as a developer and the technical side. 
Keelan, on the other side, went on into work as a product manager and product designer. So their combined skills are very complementary into creating a product. However, I think that the main risk in for them is that their experience is under five years. They were they work very little time in their companies, and they also have no previous experience working as founders. Um, they're friends, and they have been friends for a long time. I think since 2015 or so. Um, but there are there is no evidence that they have worked together. So that would be one of the considerations. Um, to 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 notice about the founders the team that they have put together is very slowly growing um they, right now they have two people in their team a founding engineer that is in charge is mostly in charge of designing and developing the smart contracts his name is let me see i kind of forget enough of my head i think it's trevor trevor judas is the the founding engineer and he's got a very enthusiastic social presence where he is excited about the project he's working full time and he seems to have a lot of ideas he's a young guy uh, that has a lot of experience working on the technical side um but he's also working alone on this technical side Can you guys see my um, screen? I think it went away. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, it, it went uh, down. I don't know. Maybe another moderator uh, put it down, or maybe something happened. But we were, uh, anyway, almost out of time. Uh, Anna, I would like uh, you to summarize and uh, to double down on the uh, yeah, that they're um, quite uh, inexperienced or relatively has uh, not so much experience. Can you maybe also say if it is a well rounded team? Uh, yes, I, I think, think the team is one of the uh, things that we're looking at. Absolutely. I think, you know, like, as we know, like most startups fail due to team dynamics. And, you know, there is one as the team, there is the one technical guy and they have not yet um, been able to hire a full stack developer to help him out. Instead, they hired another person as a senior associate to work on business strategy, which I thought it was like an, a little bit of an odd type of um, decision there. But I guess, you know, to kind of speed, speed up, you know, their solution, um, it's really putting a lot of emphasis on providing high yield strategies. We could be very successful. And however, I think that the risk here is that there is not a real focus on what their target audience is. So that's something that they will have to develop. The market, I think, is the strongest part of this project where they are part of the DeFi market that has you know, $40 billion market cap as a sector. And we have seen the lending, the lending market overall raise into like about $6 billion as users uh, borrowing about six billion dollars um at the end of last year on on collateralized lending however is still very small so they have captured about 200 million dollars on assets in this type of lending protocols which is which seems to promise a lot of opportunity there there is about nine top players in in this market right now so a lot of growth can come from there um the the biggest risk for them is team their community is very slow they really don't have a marketing strategy um but another one of the strengths is that they have been able uh to raise money from a top tier uh investors including polychain capital which has invested in over 24 DeFi projects 90 de deals on on blockchain startups which um it is a testament of how they have used their connections to be able to get their project off the ground. So I think that this, even though right now it's at a stage where it's not completely ready, it's something to to look to look for in the future. Oh, I, I can't hear you, Dima. 
Yeah, thanks a lot uh, for uh, sharing, Anna. Uh, that's uh, indeed a comprehensive analysis uh, taking into account uh, how little uh, public information uh, was out there. And I'm, uh, I agree with you that the DeFi market is now uh, quite um, booming, and I'm happy that you're going to be joining us with the DeFi program. Um, thank you. With the, with the next cohort. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you so much, uh, Anna. And we are now uh, moving to the last participant of the cohort, uh, or the last person who is presenting for this cohort, Alessia. I'm uh, really proud to, to uh, share um, Alessia, and she has uh, also such a diverse background. She's just starting in Web3, and um, uh, she's a, a SEO manager, uh, but she's you know, taking all the efforts uh, to analyze the project. So I'm uh, really proud that she's uh, taken care of of um, of that, and that she analyzed the project called Flashy Cash. So, Alexa, please, uh, the floor is yours. Uh, okay. Uh, oh my God. Okay. Just a second. Um, no, we can. Yeah, okay. we can see your screen. All good. Yeah. Um, yes, everything is good. Yes. You have yes, but four minutes uh, to tell us a little bit more. Yes, but I can't uh, see my screen. Uh, I think it's some problems uh, with the internet internet connections here. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, yes, exactly. the good thing is we do see your screen. So, if you have um, any notes, maybe we uh, on on, uh, on the project. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, let me start. Uh, today, I would like to present uh, uh, startup Flashy Cash, and uh, um, Flashy Cash is uh, a non custodial uh, custodial uh, DApp that uh, provides. Uh, uh, the easiest uh, on and off ramps for B2B and B2C users. And uh, uh, also, uh, I want to say a few words about uh, founder. Uh, Eric is experienced in crypto, Web3, Pintech, payments, gaming, fashion, and uh, the arts, and uh, um, established significant, significant uh, brands. Uh, and uh, uh, what is uh, the so uh, solution uh, of uh, Flashy Cash? Uh, uh, the advantage is uh, combined years of experience and domain uh, expertise in the payments and Web3 space industries, in addition to the founder's com com commitment uh, to building a robust ecosystem. Uh, the product uh, is uh, already uh, gaining tr uh, traction and uh, also uh, I want to say a few words about market. They are target markets uh, of crypto on and off ramps and uh, um, users are in Africa, India and the Middle East and uh, where large established communities already use that for uh, uh, transactions. Uh, no tokens is expected. As uh, for communities, Flashy Cash face challenges with low engagement across social platforms, meaning on Twitter, Telegram, and LinkedIn followers. Also, uh, they uh, don't put nothing uh, on Medium. And uh, I think uh, that they should improve uh, more active and engaging social media strategy uh, is essential because uh, it's a mar marketing and it's important, but maybe for now uh, using B2B and white label model is less important as uh, it uh, relies on social, on local business partners uh, for end user service usage. Um, and uh, uh, few words about uh, partners. Uh, Flashy Cash has secured partnership with various backers, including Challenge, 
uh, EQI Bank, Yep, St uh, Stasis, and others. These partners uh, bring experience uh, across cryptocurrency exchanges, digital banking, payment solutions, stable coins, uh, uh, payment uh, technology, uh, investment management, and, uh, uh, and other things. Mm, and uh, I uh, want to say a few words about Roadmap. Uh, the founder you know, worked uh, in top positions in previous companies and uh, he showed a great results there. And uh, I used Crunchbase and checked the uh, challenge, uh, crypto pay and upload. And I can say that uh, mm -hmm. uh, Challenge is actually using 26 stack uh, um, for its uh, according to build with. Uh, these include uh, WordPress, Amazon, and uh, Cloudfire hosting. Uh, CryptoPay has raised a total of uh, uh, 18 and 1 million uh, dollars in funding over three uh, rounds. And uh, um, Upload uh, also has raised a total of uh, $74.9 million. Uh, and uh, also I would like to say that now they are in the press it uh, round and they uh, are raising 2 million euros in uh, on a safe at uh, uh, 20 million valuation cap. And uh, uh, for a few words about uh, uh, summarize, I want to summarize uh, that uh, as a cutting edge platform, uh, uh, revolution, nice uh, value uh, exchange, and uh, fostering trust in the Web3 landscape, Flashy Cash could uh, uh, immensely benefit from uh, Taylor's marketing approach to uh, amplify its impact and uh, reach within uh, the uh, fintech space. And uh, that's it from my side, I think. Uh, if you uh, Thank you for your attention. If you have uh, any questions, I'm ready to answer mm -hmm. to you. Thank you so much, Alessa, for uh, preparing and, sh and sharing and being brave enough uh, to present it on public. Uh, kudos to you. Um, I'm actually acquainted with Eric, but I never um, get to know their team. Uh, can you say a few more uh, words about the team? Is it uh, how big it is? Uh, how complementary it is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that I forgot to uh, say about team. Uh, they consist of eight associate member, me members, and uh, four members have uh, indicated working full time on uh, these projects. Uh, uh, on LinkedIn, they put information that uh, uh, they uh, full time uh, on this project, but uh, I checked and uh, they provided uh, identical information regarding their involvement in other projects. Um, but as uh, for uh, founder, I can say that uh, Eric is experienced in uh, crypto and uh, Despite his impact, impact, uh, impactful work, uh, he maintains a low profile on social media platform, but uh, I think uh, mm -hmm. that uh, his previous, his background uh, is really good and yeah. I hope, yeah, I hope that they will grow. Yeah, yeah. Um... Eric is actually a, a very energetic person, uh, too bad that uh, they're not so active on uh, their social media. Okay, thank you so much, Alessa. Now I would like to give the floor uh, to uh, Ivan as we are wrapping up the session and we have some uh, essential information to show before uh, we go uh, and uh, take uh, some other tasks that we have. So uh, Ivan, please uh, uh, wrap up the session and please share uh, a little bit more information for us with us what what do you have sure uh, thank you dima it was great to hear uh, the reports from our community it's a pleasure to see how you are growing and to be a part of uh, this growth as i love to mention that uh, growing together it's uh, the most valuable experience for me from 3x education i'm learning and i'm i think one of the most hard-working students uh, 
during our programs. Uh, so let's um, start and discuss a new program that uh, we will start on 22nd of January. I'm very excited about it because we were building it together with uh, my friends, with Petro and Kellen. Uh, Petro was um, the participant of the first uh, cohort of 3X Education. And right now we are working together for almost two years. Uh, he's doing a great job at 3X Capital as well as Kellen. But coming back to the program, uh, we will have a very intensive program, eight weeks long, four hours per week, 20 different uh, DeFi tools that we will discover in order to secure your crypto, track your crypto and analyze new opportunities. Also, we have built an AI tutor uh, that will help our community to find out the answers um, faster. Mm, the our offer is to help you to grow from the passive crypto holder to a DeFi investor by mastering and practicing different strategies uh, in order to build a secure and uh, thesis driven uh, portfolio that will generate definitely some impressive returns in a couple of years. You can scan a QR code here and find out more about the program and see what we have built for you. Actually, I already introduced Petro, and it's my pleasure to introduce Kellen. Kellen is a seasoned DeFi investor with uh, more than four years of experience in the space. He um, participated in the seventh cohort of the program and was my mentee during uh, six cohort. And we have spent a lot of time uh, brainstorming with Kellen and speaking about uh, market trends. And finally, we have uh, understood that uh, there is a huge demand for uh, this type of program where people will be able to activate uh, their crypto assets and have additional returns on top of their holdings. Uh, speaking about my personal experience, I started my crypto journey eight years ago. I worked uh, in the family office as an investment analyst and then as a portfolio manager. And right now, I'm very proud to be one of the partners at 3X Capital and building this uh, great uh, space and team together with uh, my partners. Um, speaking about the program, it will be quite intensive. Uh, we will have eight weeks. Uh, we will start with introduction to DeFi, some basic topics uh, and different cases that we had in the past. On the week two, we will go through the major blockchain ecosystems and discuss their technology, their uh, approaches to manage their communities. We will also discuss uh, different uh, DeFi tools that they have uh, on uh, their networks. After this, we will uh, move forward to a practical part of the program where, we'll, where, uh, where we will build a financial plan together with you. And after uh, the financial plan, uh, we will start building our DeFi portfolio. We will provide all templates to the participants uh, that they will be able to use in their uh, future work. We will provide our guidance and mentorship to them. And of course, we will have some advanced topics where people will be able to leverage AI automation tools in order to uh, do different uh, testing and research activities. On week eight, we will have a, a wrap up session where our participants will present their portfolios, the DeFi projects that they have discovered during the program. And I believe there are so many opportunities right now in the space that uh, definitely we will leverage. Also, we will have guest speakers every Tuesday uh, during the program, during the eight weeks. And uh, Chief Operating Officer of One Inch, uh, Andre, will open the program on uh, Tuesday. Uh, and then we will have speakers who will be um, presenting different types of protocols, blockchains, and of course, security um, guidelines to our participants. Um, this program works perfectly both for uh, crypto holders uh, that actually right now uh, represent around 98% of the market and also uh, DeFi investors who would like to build more complex uh, strategy and become a part of the network of uh, leading professionals, because I believe the community is crucial here. There are so many things right now, and it's great to uh, review them, uh, discover them together, and then uh, invest together. 
The format of the program will include uh, lectures on Mondays from uh, 3x Capital, also um, guest lectures, as I mentioned, on Tuesdays. On Wednesday, we will have a market research meeting where we will discuss all major crypto updates as well as different uh, reports on leading blockchain ecosystems. On Thursdays, we will have a peer-to-peer -peer sessions where our participants will be able to discuss different innovations and ask questions uh, from leading experts. On Fridays, we will have one-to-one -one mentorship session. As I mentioned, we have already built an AI tutor that will help our participants to uh, find out the answers and materials uh, quite fast. And also we will provide an access to our community that will definitely benefit and uh, maybe even uh, help people to find uh, their friends. Uh, regarding the guest speakers, I already mentioned uh, Andre uh, Rabatelli, Chief Operating Officer from One Inch, uh, Alex Andruhin, uh, Chief Executive Officer from Godbeat, uh, Bruno Calabretta, uh, Chief Executive Officer of ICP Hub Indonesia, uh, Dmitro Budorin, uh, Chief Executive Officer of Haken, and also there will be a Dmitro from Haken. I, I was just speaking with him yesterday. Uh, he will present his insights on security because he's expert on security audits and hacking. Uh, we will have three different packages. There is a basic package that includes access to all materials and lecture recordings. Uh, it also includes all practical tasks, so people will be able to do uh, the exercises on their own. Uh, we will have a standard uh, package that includes uh, live lectures, uh, weekly peer-to-peer uh, -peer meetings, market uh, research meetings, and uh, different types of uh, personal brand activities that we prepared for you. Uh, and of course, access to our community AI tutor, and we will also provide NFT certificate for all participants who will have a standard and will have access to all the classes during the program. Uh, we will also provide certificates to everyone who uh, will present their project in the end of the program. So I'm very excited to see what new opportunities we will find together. Also, we have a premium package that includes individual mentorship sessions uh, from investment analysts or from general partner as well, from me. Also, uh, we will have an individual work on the portfolio. We will. Uh, together build and diversify uh, the portfolio with uh, the participant. We will uh, also provide a lot of individual feedback uh, on the uh, future growth of the portfolio. We'll have a separate chat where um, participants will be able to ask uh, different questions faster. So to, uh, to sum up, we have three different packages. Uh, for premium, only five spots left. And for standard, we have uh, around 50 spots left. Um, for basic, as I mentioned, you will have recordings, uh, course materials, but you will have to practice all uh, things on your own. So we are starting on 22nd of January, um, and I'm really excited to invite everyone to this program. It will be something exciting for, uh, for our team and for uh, new participants. Also, we will do a great webinar with Petro uh, on 11th of January, just next Thursday. I highly uh, recommend you to join if you are interested to activate your portfolio and build the strategies for, for this year. So we will provide more insights on what worked well or not, what challenges we had, uh, what security issues we had, and uh, we would be happy to answer all your questions. And of course, we have uh, prepared several uh, additional bonuses for you. So definitely suggest uh, to join. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, save this date, um, 11th of January, um, 16 UTC. Uh, see you there. And thank you. Maybe we have any questions in the chat. I'm happy to answer. Mm -hmm. 
I, I do not see the chat, but I see that Oksana has joined. Oksana, it's my pleasure to give a word to you. Yeah, thank you, Ivan. Uh, looking forward to participating in this program. And yeah, I know how long you have prepared and uh, how much energy you invest. And yeah, uh, I'm sure that it will be just perfect program. So guys, if you're still thinking about join or not to join, 100% join, it will be just perfect and really insightful program. And yeah, as I checked in our chat, we do not have any questions. And um, that is the time to say bye for everyone. First of all, really thank you for our participants from cohort seven. Uh, it was a pleasure to work with you all. Thank you for your job. Thank you for your involvement. Thank you for your researches. Thank you for being active. Uh, we do not say bye. Uh, we say for the new um, meetings. Uh, looking forward to uh, seeing our other programs. Um, we are open to partner, to work together. Um, really happy that you became a part of our 3x education community. And for all others who are just thinking to join or not to join the programs, 100% uh, uh, yes. Uh, we are looking forward to work with you and to help you to develop yourself uh, professionally and personally. So, yeah, thank you for being with us today. Uh, wishing you a good Friday Eve and good weekends. And yeah, see you in next 3X Education programs. Bye.